Lena Morrissey is chief executive of Newton Investment Management and founder of the 30% Club, which campaigns for gender equality in the boardroom. She joins us now. And Helena, you Morning. know, we were just looking at pictures of, uh, well, the deserted streets of Greece because of the strikes. And I suppose that just really underscores uh, the challenges, the economic challenges facing Europe right now. Mm. But it has been feeding through to the markets, hasn't it? Most definitely. And, and the people that I've, I've been speaking to have said investors right now, many of them are not looking at the fundamentals. Of, of very strong companies. Uh, actually, they are just so concerned by the level of uncertainty out there. And I'm just wondering how much that complicates investment mm. strategy. Well, clearly, we've seen uh, you know sideways volatility pretty much all year in the markets. We have at Newton been expecting that, really, because, uh, frankly, the backdrop didn't look great um, for you know any kind of upwards movement, um, and I think that we do have to recognise that you know this is going to have a huge impact on on earnings and on sentiment, um, and try to look through. I mean, clearly, it's an environment of get rich slow rather than get rich quick. Right. Um, so I guess that means patience on on your part. Well, it does, but also the types of companies you want to yeah. invest in. At the moment, obviously, we're seeing a lot of you know downwards movement. Whatever's happening, um, whatever the fundamentals, as you say, but clearly cash rich companies that are in, in sectors that we all need I mean whether it be telephony um, utilities you know consumers need certain things whatever the environment so I do think that going for companies uh, particularly high yielding equities right. um, can help you and can contribute to total returns yeah. um, so it's not completely doom and gloom but you have to be very careful the defensive approach and then the high yielding uh, equities mm -hmm. uh, what you like and so let's just move on to uh, the 30% Club, which mm -hmm. is an initiative that I know you've been spearheading, and it's about chairman pledging to have 30% female representation on their board by 2015. I'm just wondering what prompted you to establish the club in the first place? Well, in all honesty, it was slight frustration that there's lots of good initiatives um, in particular companies, individual, individual companies and individuals doing work to try to um, make for a more inclusive environment. But what we'd seen for many years had been really no movement. Uh, it was about 10% women on boards in the UK. And if you talk to anybody from any company, whatever they did, they seemed to be stuck at that level. And I noticed as well that what happened was women were talking to women, whereas actually what I felt was important to engage with the business leaders who are usually men um, and that was the idea behind getting the chairman on board and setting an aspirational target as not a call for a quota which I don't agree with um, shows that they and they're doing it because they believe that it would add value to their companies and how much interest are you actually getting from company leaders because you know we're just speaking about the volatility that we've been seeing and there's this very difficult economic climate uh, you know many of them might just want to find the best person that they can to, to navigate these difficult waters uh, regardless of gender totally I mean this is about the best person for the board but one of the key ingredients I mean at Newton we describe it as no monopoly on great ideas um, you need to look at how you build a board it's effectiveness of the team that's a board so having one type of person identikit board um, I think was a contributory factor behind the financial crisis you didn't have enough challenge particularly in the banks um, so this is about one of the parts of the solution so I'm just wondering how much how much interest are we seeing in terms of uh, diversification of the board, particularly in the aftermath of the financial crisis? How much of an impact is it having on, on corporate governance? Well, we're up to 30 chairmen who are supportive of the 30% club, so that gives you some sort of flavour, mostly of the FTSE, um, although also some smaller companies. FTSE 100 companies, many yes. of them, are they? Um, and then, I mean, it is definitely one of those sort of paradigm shifts where you've got people who are, believe it, get it, doing something about it, and those who are sort of dragging their feet. Um, but I think increasingly what you're seeing is investors now thinking actually we do want effective boards it's an incredibly important part of how shareholder returns are created is the strategy right is the company in tune with its marketplace and you've just seen in the UK the publication by the Financial Reporting Council of changes to the corporate governance code specifically requiring boards to have gender diversity policies um, and, and investors are now starting to get behind this well so speaking of that finding about a uh, gender diversity policy do, you say that you're against quotas but perhaps is that the sort of thing that boards will ultimately need mandatory quotas to actually enforce this sort of change because, well, they might not be too keen to do it voluntarily. 
Well, I very much hope not. I mean, I think the Norwegian example, where they did introduce quotas several years ago, people often cite as a success story. Um, there's uh, the appearance of success because they have brought 40% women on the boards. But if you look at shareholder results and if you look at also the number of companies that delisted, mm. that took themselves private to avert the legislation, you know, that is smacks of, you know, not what you want. You want to have companies doing it because they believe in it. It shouldn't be something that's coerced. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed. Helena Morrison, Chief Executive of Newton Management and founder of the 30% Club. Thanks very much.